Carolyn Jackson um, knows Matt and is going to introduce him for us today. Thanks, Carolyn. Bet. Good morning, and um, thank you, Matt, for joining us. Matt is with a Greater MSP Partnership, um, and this was sort of a brainchild of a group called the Itasca Project. And the Itasca Project is a group of um, employers, uh, business leaders, who have looked at the Twin Cities metropolitan area and said, we've got a lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies here. What makes this such a great area? And what can we do as business leaders to improve our um, community? Um, the, in their mission, it's a thriving economy and expanding prosperity. And around 2006, 2007, they hired McKinsey Consulting to say, what do we really need in this area? And after a study, they said, we need an economic development partnership that can market the region, not just one city, not just one site, but the region as a whole. And they put together Greater MSP. And Doug Baker, who was then the CEO of Ecolab, really uh, drove the um, bus on this and, and put together Greater MSP and was their first chair. The mission of Greater MSP is to accelerate regional competitiveness and inclusive economic growth through job creation, capital investment, and execution of strategic initiatives. The partnership works to strengthen our region's global sectors, prioritize talent, and tell our story. And the city of Edina was one of the original partners. It's both a partnership between businesses and cities and um, government units um, trying to, again, coordinate and, and market this area. So Matt is a uh, vice president of strategic initiatives at Greater MSP, and he oversees a growing portfolio of economic development initiatives led by coalitions of hundreds of partner organizations, including Edina, um, across the region. And they include Make It MSP, Talent Attraction and Retention, the Forge North Startup Initiative, and the Regional Air Services Partnership. Matt's a former journalist and I believe originally from Edina and he earned his MBA and Master's of Public Policy from the University of Minnesota. He lives here in Minnesota with, or Minneapolis with his wife Whitney. So Matt, we would love to hear what Greater MSP is up to these days. Awesome, thanks for that wonderful introduction and the warm welcome. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. We tested it once. All right. Well, uh, it's good to be here, um, as is mentioned, and uh, as you saw in the chat, Mayor Heldon likes to claim me. Um, I'm, he's gotten better at uh, clarifying that, unfortunately, I don't uh, live in Edina, but I'm, I'm just down the street. Um, my, my wife thinks I tricked her into moving to Edina, but we're actually at 48th and Colfax, so pretty close. Um, but good to be here. Uh, plenty of friends in the Morningside area, too. So. Um, uh, as was mentioned, uh, Greater MSP was created about a decade ago. I'll go through that. I joined the organization three, four years in, um, and I'll provide an update on what's going on in Greater MSP, talk a little bit about my work um, and the, the portfolio of initiatives I'm leading that's fairly new, um, and then talk about one in particular to kind of illustrate how that works so it's not so academic. Um, so the reason that the Greater MSP partnership was created is because our region competes in the global economy as a market, um, not necessarily as any one uh, jurisdiction. Um, so this, this is a, a picture of the metropolitan statistical area. This is you know, determined by the federal government based on commuting patterns. It's not a shape that people wear on a t-shirt. People don't identify as MSP <laughs> usually, um, but this is uh, how our metro is, is structured um, from an economic standpoint. And so it's how the partnership is structured. Um, and we focus on um, any opportunity to grow jobs and in investment in our region, but um, particularly um, prioritize our industry sectors of strength. And one of the great things about this particular region here is we're one of the most diverse metro economies anywhere in the world. Um, it's how we're, um, you know, our resilience, we tend to um, come out of uh, years like last year stronger than most places. Um, and we tend to, when things are booming, um, not quite boom as, as high, um, we're pretty steady. Um, so Greater MSP was uh, originally created for the reason that, that Carolyn um, uh, so succinctly put it, um, but uh, over the last uh, few years, the board of the partnership and, and its many organizational investors really taken a step back and said, now that this thing has been created, what do we really want it to be? And a couple of years ago launched a new vision, a new mission, and a new structure, and a new portfolio of work, which I'll talk about um, today. 
So for those uh, who have been familiar with Greater MSP, uh, Mary was talking about that earlier, um, the, the work that started in 2011 when Doug Baker and other leaders in the region uh, created um, Greater MSP is really those, those three boxes you see in green. So a team focused on um, jobs and capital investment. So deals where our region and was competing with other regions around the country and the world for uh, business expansion, occasionally a relocation, um, a research team that really supported that deal process so that we could be nimble um, in responding to a client that wanted to know uh, something at the drop of the hat from the strength of our uh, school system to our transportation and infrastructure to partnerships with higher education to you name it. Um, and then we had a team, a marketing team focused on creating a brand and image of this region to business decision makers and a whole industry of site selectors, um, which is a crazy world that I didn't know anything about before I joined Greater MSP, um, to increase the perceptions of this place as a place to bring uh, a project. So that work started right away. Um, but if you don't work in economic development in a city or a county or for the state, um, you, know, you know, that's kind of an invisible process. Um, so a lot of the work at Greater MSP, you know, people didn't really see it every day. Uh, the work that I do um, is uh, a little different um, and has really informed a, a transformation across Greater MSP. Um, so all those areas and stars are, are um, areas that are in kind of my portfolio of work, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but what's really happened, the, the pivot that Greater MSP made a couple years ago is to say, you know, did we create this to just be an organization um, that brings people together to work on these deals that kind of happen in the shadows or uh, people don't really understand? Or did we build this to be a partnership to do big things as a region that are important to our entire regional economy that maybe we can't do alone, whether we're a big Fortune 500 company or a giant city or a university or a small organization? Um, and uh, spoiler alert, the, the board uh, and the partnership chose the latter. Um, and so what we've been trying to do is transform this um, into a platform that brings individuals, leaders, organizations together to do big things. And if we're doing our job well, we're not necessarily the expert, um, but we can bring the experts together to do, to do things together. So that original um, impetus for creating Greater MSP to compete uh, for these deals on a global basis uh, a lot's been learned in the decade that we've been doing this work. So um, I'll, sh I'll show a little bit how that works, but uh, our team has worked on hundreds of deals um, that have resulted in you know, thousands of jobs for uh, cities across the region, um, uh, you know, more than 25,000 direct jobs and then um, indirect jobs that, that spill over from that. And over the course of, um, of that decade, we've learned a lot about how deals work. So, you know, a project that we see, you know, in the paper with the ribbon cutting um, usually has been going on for anywhere from six, you know, to 36 months where a company either on its own or uh, increasingly hires a consulting firm to basically look at their options for building their next facility or expanding um, somewhere in the world. Um, and prior to Greater MSP, some municipalities, some counties, sometimes the state, um, would be involved early on, but usually we were just reactionary. Um, and so the, the purpose of Greater MSP was to work together earlier in this deal process to compete with one strong voice and hopefully get um, more projects all the way through the pipeline to wins. And so since we've been doing this work for a decade, over the last uh, year, um, we, we stopped and took a look at all the projects that we competed for as a partnership over the previous decade. And we had a task force of uh, elected leaders and business leaders um, working together to diagnose what's working and what's not and how the economy has changed, how projects have changed. Um, and as a result, um, this year are launching a new strategy to work on that deal process even better and even smarter and focus more on in the areas where we tend to win. Um, so this isn't a place um, that tends to um, go looking for companies that are going to uh, relocate their Fortune 500 headquarters here, uh, like due to places like Austin or Dallas or Atlanta. But this is a place that becomes maybe the first um, uh, North American headquarters um, for a company somewhere in the globe that works in one of our sectors of strength, right? So as an example, um, or as another example, we found that um, many of the project wins 
um, that have uh, added incremental jobs have been deals that were otherwise going to lead to an expansion of a Minnesota company somewhere else in the country or the world, where our intervening earlier prevented that from happening. It was a major um, Fortune 2000 uh, headquarters uh, uh, deluxe uh, recently that was, uh, some of you might have seen, um, considering um, relocating to Atlanta, they're expanding in Atlanta and expanding here and keeping that headquarters here um, is something that we worked on for a couple of years as an example. So I won't go through all the learnings, but um, that's something that's going on. And then the research and marketing functions that support those deals, um, they've grown as well. So that work was happening, you know, mostly out of view of um, people who don't work in economic development. But a few years ago, we, we put together this um, dashboard that measures the region's competitiveness. And it was the first time we really kind of publicly started using our research function um, to get the partnership to understand how we're competing in the global economy, how we're performing compared to other peer regions across the country. Um, there, some of you have probably seen this. Um, there's kind of a suite of indicators that we track year on year. And we look at a peer set of regions that we compete with um, around the country. These aren't the only places, but it gives us a sense of how we're performing, not just compared to ourselves, but compared to other places around the country. Um, and over time, that, that's really built up the muscle of our research and intelligence team. And so in this new 2.0 version of Greater MSP, that team is expanding and doing more work in real time. So an annual set of indicators is really great, uh, but the intelligence that business decision makers and elected officials and others need to understand what's going on in the economy month to month, even week to week, um, is important. And so um, this is actually something that launched just a few weeks ago, a regional recovery hub that's tracking economic trends as fast as we can do it um, and putting together kind of custom reports for our partners to understand um, what's going on in the global economy and how we're competing um, in real time. And then similarly, um, we're building out a new brand strategy um, for marketing to support that deal work. And actually we're in the process of hiring a new uh, marketing communications leader who will create that new global brand strategy. So I'll have more to share maybe next time I talk. Um, but my role at Greater MSP is to um, power something that we call strategic initiatives. And this is really the most, um, the, the greatest personification, I guess, of the 2.0 version of Greater MSP, where it's not a bunch of staff kind of working with some leaders in businesses and cities and counties, but really a lot more public facing work that involves a lot more people. So each one of these initiatives is made up of a really diverse coalition, um, in some cases, hundreds of different organizations. Um, and working together, we set regional goals that are tied to the indicators on that dashboard that I just showed, um, right? So things that aren't about um, a program goal, but um, moving a regional indicator. And then we execute that in teams um, on a project by project basis that all connect back to those regional goals. And the role of my staff and the consultants that we hire is to really power those teams who have the expertise and the capacity to do the work because at the end of the day, Greater MSP is as an organization, just a small nonprofit, we can't move the regional economy. Um, and so Carolyn mentioned a few of those initiatives. Um, we, we started building them before we even had a model um, for it. And so the, the building of them, which I did over the last few years informed everything I'm gonna show you now. But we started a few years ago with an initiative focused on talent attraction and retention. We launched one with the Metropolitan Airport Commission that's about direct air routes. And we launched a startup initiative. A few months ago, we launched a global food and agriculture initiative. And then um, later this year, we'll be launching an initiative that's focused on um, young adults who have completed career readiness programs in our region, like Step Up and Right Track and Genesis Works, um, largely young adults of color, largely first generation graduates, um, and making sure that we're doing a job as a region of following them through their post secondary experience and connecting them to career opportunities in our region. And I know we've got a couple of city council members on the call, actually newly elected uh, council member James Pierce is on the leadership team of that initiative um, in his role at Cargill. Um, and so I thought with just a few minutes and then I'll open up to questions, I'll show you how one of those initiatives works and de demonstrate um, how Greater MSP is transforming. So the Forge North startup initiative, which is one that Mayor Hovland knows quite well and he's got a family member that works in the startup space. So I've talked to him about it quite a bit. Um, so we start with, regional indicators, how is our region performing? Um, and actually the Minneapolis-St. Paul region over the last few years when it comes to startup growth has been improving um, pretty consistently compared to our peers. And we're now in the place where outside of Chicago, there's kind of no place in the heartland of the country that's 
doing as well um, in our startup uh, community, both from um, growth rate of new ventures to the amount of venture capital deployed to the number of accelerators and programs that are here for high growth entrepreneurs. So there's a lot happening, but we're competing in the national and global economy with top metros around the world. So we have a little bit higher ambition than just you know, being better than Des Moines. Um, and so in each area of uh, each initiative, I mentioned that there's a diverse coalition of partners, sometimes hundreds. And in this case, we bring together entrepreneurs, startup companies, investors, venture capital firms, corporate innovation teams, uh, accelerators, universities, government, and we set big regional goals. And so for this initiative, um, there's a few hundred partners that work together to set goals around the first check that gets written to these high growth ventures, a goal around getting our large enterprises engaged in the startup community, and a goal specifically around um, the ownership reflecting the racial diversity of our region. Um, if you look at how venture capital flows um, nationally, only 1% of it goes to people of color. There was some great progress last year in our region, 5% of the deals went to people of color, but about 25 to 30% of our region are, are people of color. And so you, you can see this is how people build wealth and um, intergenerational wealth. Uh, I probably wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing today if my own father hadn't started a company and been successful. That put me on a, on a terrific career path. And so how do we address the significant economic disparities in our region. This is one of the primary ways, and it's a focus of the initiative. Um, and then through uh, projects, and we work together to achieve these goals. So a national marketing campaign targeting venture capital leaders is an example. There's many of uh, plenty of other projects, but I won't have the time to go through them today. Um, and then in terms of leadership, um, there's more than 120 organizations that are part of this coalition, but each initiative has a team of leaders that kind of represent the diversity of that coalition. So the folks you see here who are on the leadership team, some of them are in the C-suite at Fortune 500 companies. Some of them run the most active venture firms. Some of them are entrepreneurs themselves struggling right now to build their business. Um, and so we get that mix of perspectives to make decisions together. And then our staff powers the work. They set goals and they create strategic priorities against those goals. And I won't go through all of them and bore you too much, but um, just to give you a little bit of a flavor. And then each one of these initiatives, you know, we're powering teams of organizations that um, can work together to execute those projects. And so just to give you an example, this week, these are three teams that are meeting. Um, so uh, every Tuesday, I think it is, uh, one of my team members uh, convenes a couple dozen different entrepreneurial programs in our region, accelerators and incubators, and they work together to share best practices and work on things together. Um, on Wednesday, we're having a uh, we're hosting a meet and greet of 15 of the most active venture capital firms in our region to connect with entrepreneurs and demystify what they do, and um, build relationships that can hopefully lead to deals in the future. And then on Thursday, we're convening the enterprise innovation teams from many of our largest companies. We just did an audit to understand how they're engaged with startups around the world, so that we can direct more of that engagement to startups here in our backyard. Um, and then each one of these initiatives, they they bring together a lot of different organizations. But there's a pathway for any individual in our region to participate in the work that we're doing. And usually it's probably not through joining the coalition itself, but um, joining one of the organizations that are part of that coalition, right? The work that, that your Rotary Club is doing to you know, support an effort maybe at the Lake Street Council identifying a business on Lake Street, like that's an example. Um, and so part of what we're doing is helping individuals understand what's going on in a broader ecosystem and where can they plug in. And so an example of that in Forge North is a project that some of our team members are doing to go out and talk to actually rooms like this and explain what's going on in the startup ecosystem and talk to people who might be interested in being an investor or being a mentor in an accelerator program or doing something else to support high growth startups in our region um, because we have a lot of untapped potential to um, to rely on the expertise we've got here. So I'm gonna stop because that was a lot, um, but there's plenty more going on at Creator MSP and hopefully this gives you just a little bit of a flavor of, of the type of work that we do and, um, and, I'll, and I'll take any questions. Stop wow, sharing my screen thank too. you, Matt. My goodness, I, I'm taking notes furiously as you're speaking. Um, it's just uh, fascinating how much you cover. <laughs> Um, one of the questions that came in is that we see Mille Lacs and Lesseur counties as members of Greater MSP. Can you kind of talk about how the uh, overall coalition is put together and, um, and who forms Greater MSP and, and how those people have joined? 
Yeah, absolutely. So even in the decade since we've been created, the federal government has changed the definition of our metropolitan area. Um, and that change that changes um, based on commuting patterns. Um, and so part of part of the value of Greater MSP that was proven in the last few months is, you know, when the US Economic Development Administration has funds that could be directed to any part of the country, you have to have a regional certified strategy and plan to be eligible for those funds. So we organize around those federal definitions. So over that decade, we've gone from, I think, a 16 county MSA to a 13 county MSA and now a 15 county. So we focus our work and our strategy around whatever that definition is. And then we go out to those counties that are a part of that metro area. Um, and it's up to the county, right? There's no, um, there's no mandate, right? So this is really, a, you, know, you have to believe in regionalism, but that's, that's how the approach works. Okay. So related to that, do, are we seeing um, the economic um, engine of the, of well, I'll call central Minnesota, or that would really be St. Cloud, but the greater MSP area, um, is it becoming decentralized or is it just um, sort of the ebb and flow of how um, business is going? Because I know Lesseur County has um, uh, the, I can't think of the name of it, the um, uh, countertop company. And um, and that would be a big economic driver, but how, how are you seeing um, economic activity? Uh, is it centralized or is it kind of expanding into these greater um, areas? Uh, it's pretty decentralized. I mean, I think if you, if you just look at the number of deals that, we've, that we work on or that we have active in the pipeline, I mean, it's all over. And actually in the first, um, in the first few years of Greater MSP, most of the, um, the deals that the, lead, the leads that were generated and the deals that we were working were actually not in the center cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, and at the time we had cities in Minneapolis and St. Paul saying, why is that? And um, shooting the messenger sometimes, we kind of just work what, what kind of sites the client wants to work on. And so we were able to work with those two cities and show them the deal process and, and the, the types of sites that clients were asking for. And if we didn't have it, then they quickly move on. And that led the city staffs in Minneapolis and St. Paul to develop a strategy to get more sites market ready for the types of deals that we were winning. Right? Um, and th but then over the next few years, it started to flip and <laughs> we started to see um, more um, high technology companies looking for things in the, in the center cities. And now in the last year, we've seen another transformation. So the idea is like, there's gonna be these cyclical effects where things may be moved in different parts of the Metro, but we continue to compete as a region um, and get the attention of the, the company um, as a market. Um, and then sometimes the site is available in one part of the region and sometimes another. Okay, great. So um, if you could wave your magic wand, what's one area, um, of one of the aspects of our area that you'd like to see improved? Um, so if you're talking to companies, you say, oh, I really wish we had this one tool or this one asset, what would that be? Does it ever come up that way? Um, certainly the sites are important, but I mean, personally, um, and this addresses a question that just came through the chat, I think our region's ability to use the moment of the last year to finally address systemic issues in our region that lead to the most significant racial disparities in our region, that's, that's the holy grail. And if you look at major metros across the country, the generation that's graduating from college today in the top 30 metros is more than 50% people of color. This is the future of our regions, this is the future of our workforce, it's the future of our economy. If we're a region that can't get racial equity right, we don't compete. And it's not like a nice thing to do, it's, it's we don't compete. Um, and so one of the things that I'm a little excited about um, cautiously is that I think the events of the last year have kind of woken more people up, have woken more leaders up to the reality of the things that we need to work on. It's what drives me as someone who has the power to put together coalitions to think about how do I use that influence to bring people to the table who might not normally, their organization might not usually be at one of these tables. Um, I think that's the thing that we have to work on and we can get more great sites and we can have a great marketing plan um, and we can have some other things, but doing that important systemic work is, is what's gonna make or break us as a region. Interesting. 
Um, so the questions have kind of come flooding in here. Um, real briefly, uh, a Moroccan firm, OCP North America, recent, uh, recently established its North America headquarters here. Was that part of Greater MSP's work? I don't know. <laughs> I can okay. find out. We're working so many deals, and that's another kind of division of the partnership that I don't always know every deal, but I'd be happy to, to check yeah. it out. And that would be an example of, of the sweet spot, right? So um, a partnership that we developed with the Medical Alley Association, right? That's obviously the medical device industry is one of our strong industries here. We actually go to places like Denmark um, that have a high concentration of medical device companies and you know they set up a bridge to be this is the place that you're going to enter North America you know because other than us in Boston and San Diego and Chicago like where else would you do it and let's capture that that's an example of what we want to do more of and be smarter about our strategy and maybe not compete in an area where we know we're going to probably lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one final question. This is actually kind of a big question, but you said that one of the things that you're wanting to do is look at big things we can do in the region. And we have a question come in about whether Greater MSP is involved in addressing the achievement gap in schools and education. Um, so would that be one of the big things or could you give us an example of one of the big things that you're working on currently? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'll t I mean, I'll talk a, a little bit about Connext. I, I, I think one of the things that we're trying to make sure we um, are, are cognizant of is where there's, you know, we're expanding our mission, but you can get a little bit of mission creep and we're working our way into the K through 12 um, education is, is critical to our economic development work, but it's not where the expertise of the partnership is. But the closest I think we get to that is the initiative that I mentioned that we'll launch this year, which is called Connext. And if you look at those career readiness programs that our region has created over the last 10 to 20 years, collectively they serve tens of thousands of young adults that while they're in high school, have a meaningful work experience and start building a network that I just stumbled my way into by being the son of a business person from Edina that I just get to like walk into that network. People don't graduate high school and go into college with a network like that. And so the purpose of that is to follow those young adults as they go into post-secondary and have employers make sure that we're working with them to demystify the process of how you land those early career roles and really look at how campus recruiting is happening to make sure that it's more equitable um, and that's a pipeline of tens of thousands of young adults who will be future leaders in our in our organizations. To us, that that's some of the most important work that we're going to do as an economic development partnership over the next five years. That's not how people thought about economic development when we got started. It was just kind of at the end of the funnel of working the deal. So that would be an example. But the startup work that I mentioned, um, I picked it out because for a reason. And if you look at the 50 Fortune 500 companies that that have existed in Minnesota, uh, 51 actually, 50 were created here. We build big companies. They don't, you know, we, we don't go elf and honey to bring big companies here. We tend to build them. And so focusing on that next generation of startup growth is, is gonna be critical for Greater MSP in the next decade as well. Wow, well, a future pipeline or a pipeline of future leaders. I, I can't think of a better note to finish on. Um, this was just absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Matt. And, and thanks for your time this morning. I'll hand you back over to Margaret. Thank you, Matt. And my question to you is, um, could you provide a link for us, either uh, a, a contact info that of yours that you're comfortable with or a link that we can then connect up with Greater MSP to get future updates. Um, this, is, this is a tremendous amount of information, but it sounds like there's a lot going on and that there's a lot that's moving forward in the future and really could have an impact on a lot of us in our own businesses, but then also, you know, for a lot of our adult children as well, it's um, a very exciting time. And um, I love a lot of the focus that you mentioned today, but I'd love to, you know, learn more and, um, and kind of dive into it a little bit deeper. So if you could just type that into, I see you did as well. Um, yeah, and if there is a link on the website, that would be great if you could share that. Um, we'd appreciate it, will. it. And there's a weekly email that goes out. So if anyone wants to subscribe to that, um, feel free to just send me a note that's if you exactly can't find what it on the I, website. Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking of. So thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you joining us here today at the Dinah Morningside. Um, if you uh, ever want to consider um, learning more about Rotary, please um, go through Carolyn, of course, um, or anybody else here that you know, um, you know, a lot of people here. Um, to learn more about it, um, we welcome you to uh, come back at any time. We have a 
great schedule for the rest of the year and into next um, of speakers. And um, we'd love to have you join us again. So thank you. Um, thanks to everybody else. More to come. So next week, like I said, I will be giving kind of like the state of uh, the Dinah uh, Morningside Club and where we're at um, in comparison with our goals. Carolyn, I'm glad you're here. I just want to give you a shout out. Carolyn did a, a, a tremendous amount of work um, on a strategic plan um, for the club, working with Rotary International. We'll be going over some of those things and things that the conversations that we've had. But once again, kind of really taking a look back um, at this past year, maybe two years um, as to what we've done, um, it's really extraordinary. And I want to—I want you all to see it, but then I also want you all to kind of get a, a sense and a taste for what it's like to be a part of that. Um, and also some areas that we do need um, participation for moving forward into the future. Um, I know Steve May is busy working on his committee, uh, committees moving into his new year next year, starting in July, that comes up faster than you think. And um, I'm sure he'll be knocking on a few of your doors. If you don't hear from him, give him a call. Um, please do. Um, don't just sit there and want to help out and, and do something, join in, jump in. It's easy to do. Alrighty, guys, thanks so much again um, for joining us today. Um, thank you for all that participated. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, remember Rotary opens opportunities. Thanks again.